all people, so Jerry speaking. Welcome to Crazy Prince Web Show, episode number 66. And today we're doing not one, not two, but seven dev topics today. And we'll be doing one more topic and then we'll do another exciting announcement in regards to um, what's going to happen next to my main channel and other things. That was repeated for my part one announcement video. Or I should do it in July. We'll see what happens. And then we're going to do two more of these fun fact of the week stuff. So let's read it now. Let's get, shall we? Super God for us. And that topic on Joey Cruz, okay? Goes my name is Jules. I mean, Jules, my dad. Joey and Cruz was an American musician, singer, <laughs> excuse me, songwriter, and actor. Best known for collaboration with composer Andrew um, Baumalti, I've announced his last name, and film director. David Lynch in the late 80s and early 90s. She released four albums beginning with 1989's Fold in the Night, okay? Cruising is best known for a 1989 single, Fallen, okay? The theme song for television series Twin Peaks, okay? In which she has had her minor appearance in the uh, Madhouse Singer. Later repeated in the 1992 movie, Twin Peaks, Foul Walk With Me, okay? In the 2017 revival series, Twin Peaks Re Return, okay? She also featured in Lynch's and Belle Man Mantis, Anti Gray, 1990 Fear uh, um, production, Industrial Symphony No. 1, ugh. Okay. We use the film and let least on home media, okay? Other number of singles include... Walking ba back inside my heart in 1990, and then also bought from 1999 Wild Angle album. Okay, and she was a toy member of the Beats 52s, filling in for Cindy uh, Wilson. Okay, uh, Cruz is also a stage actress and supporting and appear on Broadway musical of Return to the Forbidden Planet, and then for Broadway musical. Um, Rather than Baby 2004. Her final album, My Secret Life, was released in 2011, which is 2011, that is. She was born in um, Crescent Area. Joel A. Cruz was the daughter of Island Descent on December 1st, 1956. Anyway, she uh, studied French horn at Drake University, okay? Performing singer and actress. In many Soviets with the Children's Fear Company, knowing the role of Good Junior and stage adaptation of Alfred Bomb's Oz books, okay? She moved to New York and played Jazz Job in the Review called Beehive, uh, while also working with Angelo Baramanti, okay? His, her career began with um, Collaboration Body and Lynch, okay? 1985, Bananti um, was um, composed and received a score of David Lynch's uh, Boo Vavette, okay? As well as serving as a vocal coach for the film's sc sc star, Isabel Rosnelli, okay? The key scene to Boo Vavette was intended to feature Miss Mar this, um, much Rose Macaulay, okay? Version of, of his song, The Siren, okay? By Tim Buckley. With lead vocal uh, by Elizabeth Fraser, okay? When it provoked, pr proved to probably pr experience of uh, day and night to use the signal to song, okay? It suggested that he, she, uh, composed a pop song in the same style, okay? Lyrics by, written by Lynch, okay? Because the song required a vocalist with a hearty, individual voice, he would recommend Crow's web song in New York Fear Workshop. Um, Bonami has produced. <laughs> Excuse me. The result of that, um, their um, arranged collaboration was Mysteries of Love, okay? Which features um, Prashree and Boo Bavette's closing scenes and Gain of Coke following, okay? He, he, they both uh, went on to write and produce. Initial songs for Cruise, both most of which were featured in their debut album, Fall in the Night in 1989. The album was 
released on September 12, 1989 by Warner Brothers Records. Try Boulevard the following year. Wow. It was provided number of material, musical material, excuse me, for Lynch's Industry Symphony Number no. 1. Ugh. In which the uh, crews perform while flowing from a harness uh, dozens of uh, feet um, above the stage the Brooklyn Academy of Music. Okay. The second more um, side of it project was the soundtrack of the Lynch's Twin Peaks, okay, for which uh, he composed a virtual score, okay, song, song following, which became a, a special, um, beam in the television series, which caused a minor, um, cessation, when a Grammy in the 33rd Annual Grammy Awards in 1991 for Best Pop and Mystery, okay, Twin Peaks soundtrack features crews in the songs Into the Night and The Night Nightingale, as well as the local version of the following, okay? Eventually, was gold, um, went gold. 500,000 copies in the U.S. A rare uh, featuring for a TV soundtrack. Crews uh, made a number of appearances on Twin Peaks, okay? Okay. As a singer in the local bar, it was probably featured um, in both the show's landmark pilot episodes. And the episode where Laurie Palmer's murderer is reviewed. Wow. As well as 1992's Twin Peaks, uh, Fire Walk With Me, Welcome Back Up Inside My Heart. The second single was Fall Into the Night. was released in 1990. was also featured in the episode of Twin Peaks along with The World Spins. In the episode, some of the main female characters are so shown lip singing to Welcome Back Inside My Heart. Wow. Cruz and Re-Erupted and sang the theme song from the episode of the USA Network show, Psy. Okay. The episode, Dow Spires, was about the skeletal full of uh, secrets and, and skeletons. Wow. While they investigate the murder of the girl. Wow. Here, 20 years to, de to this day, after Ross Palmer's murder was revealed. Wow. She appeared on Saturday Night Live on May 12, 1990, filling in for along with um, Spank's uh, Spanky Boys. Wow. On short notice, when scheduled former C.I. O'Connor refused to appear on the same show as guest host Andrew Dice Clay, Cruz performed following. Wow. The following year, Cruz requested Lynch and Bonnie to do a cover of Elvis Presley's song. Summer Kisses, Winter Tears, okay? For the soundtrack of when, where is until the end of the world. Okay. After Cruz, um, afterwards Cruz, um, maintained, um, in the reverie of all pro profile in the second album, Voice of Love, was released in 1993. The initial version of which she would die for love was used as the main theme for the movie Twin Peaks, Fire Walk With Me. It, her early collaboration with Angela Barney and D David Lynch was closely related to Lynch's film work, which is led to the lyrics, okay? For example, Into the Night begins with a whisper of words, now it's dark, a line for the witch repeatedly spoken by Frank Booth, Dennis Hopper's character in Boo Roulette. Lynch uh, also photographed Cruz for the liar notes. A Fallen in the Night and Voice of Love created the sculptures featured on the covers of both albums. In 2017, she appeared both in part 2017, excuse me, of a new peak, Twin Peaks season performing um, The World Spends. Um, she um, released the EP Free Devils 2018 to contain the original demos versions of Fallen, Fallen, and The World Spends. Post um, these two guys. Anyway, Cruz don't want to wait for an album. Um, the album Being the Girl was released in 2002, but it's the first of her albums which uh, uh, sh they both did not produce and while writing music for. But, what, but m music and lyrics for each of the songs be being written by Cruz herself. The exception of the updated version of her classic single, Falling. Guest before produced by Rick Storm and Mokane Worker, okay? 2011, Cruz released her fourth album, 
My Secret Life. The album was a contamination with DJ... I pronounce his name, sorry. Forming of D Life, okay? Right, something like that. The contained cover of uh, Darwin's um, Secret of the Witch, okay? And the cover, technically, of Hybrid's Foul B, titled A Foul Rebeen, okay? Who's also at uh, and sang an off Broadway cast of Return to Form Burning Planet, a spoof of William Shakespeare at the Templars. And toured with the B 52s at, as Cindy Williams um, touring and standing on and off from 1992 to 1999. She also performed regularly with Bobby Referent in a racial vocal group, Rogueresha, if I pronounce his name, sorry, and Circle Star, something like that. I don't know. She appeared as any one of those among the other characters, including Sandy, Susan, excuse me, I'm going anyway, Susan Sontang. Just like that, I don't know. It's well support Keith Harry Bob musical Reddit Baby at the Public Fear New York Shakespeare Festival, directed by George C. Wolf. Okay, other combinations. Does a lot. I'm gonna be reading a lot. Anyway, he leaves letters to vocals to write in my master mis miscellaneous list of combinations, mostly in um, electronic music. Okay. She collaborated with Moby in a song, Down Dress Disco, which remains on lease. Wow. She provided vocals and lyrics in several of the songs on Why Angle in 1999, the debut album by Welsh Electric Trine Music Group Hybrid, normally this. Okay. The school breaks track, If I Survive in 99. She performed two songs on Don't Panic by DJ Silver. Um, Sweet Dreams and, and I'm Your Girl. Wow. She appeared on the albums 1900 Get K I H I N. And now he died. No conventional from 2001. But Dan's always con Get K I R I have announced his word. Sorry. Um, I performed live and touring numbers times with him. Wow. The lyrics of many of these songs, such as Body Dub. Fred Cruz's own interest in true crime. Wow. The most, those, most, um, the most successful combination of the classic Say Goodbye was in Europe and elsewhere. Wow. The, she was featured in two songs by on Sopa uh, DJ's, um, I can't pronounce it, sorry. Form of D Light's um, album, um, Scream um, of the Constellations in 2000. Don't talk with me down. Don't talk me down. Excuse me. We're introducing on TBT seven three eleven oh twelve inch and the cover of ba David Bowie's um excuse me I spoke anyway David Bowie's um Space um ID okay she appeared on a number of tracks with both two thousand three album Dream Talk Dreams Talk Walk and um and the two thousand seven album Monstrous Surprise by Jones Post Rock at Paranam Mons, if I pronounce it. Anyway, Paranam, uh, Paranam of the music musician, Margaret uh, Spomaker, if I pronounce this word. Sorry, I'm not going to say the N word thing. But anyway, um, okay. It's M I K L K M I C K L E R. Have it else. But anyway, next, Cruz appear on the, um, as a guest, Mogulas, and the Sarcast White. Um, Wow, excuse me, okay, anyway. 2006 Bowling album with the New York band, um, um, Time of Orchids, released on, I can't pronounce this record's name, sorry, company's name, sorry, that I wanted to misspoke to say, but anyway, her vocal appeared, um, on the five track on Kenneth ba Bagger's, um, 2006 album, I can't pronounce it, it's fragments, um, from the Space Kid, anyway, next. Cruise the Polo Track in Cat London for the fashion photographer Matt the Colombio in the initial editorial that appeared on issue number 49 in Zoo um, Magazine 2015. That's good enough. Color versions, film soundtracks, and advertisements. Anyway, Cruise recorded several memorials, memorials covers over the years. Cruise served Cliff Richards um, Weird for, Wired for Sound. Anyway, with, um, 
I can't pronounce the album the because the artist's name. Sorry. Oh yeah, I'm the, um, into the end of the world as we know it, and and I feel fine with Eric C Cooper, um, and Ronix Sweet Dreams and are made for this with DJ Silver, Elvis Presley Summer Kisses, Winter Tears, and Day Boys, um, Space Oddity with Silver DJ. I can't pronounce that. Sorry, it starts with the D. Anyway, in '96. Cruise was on the with the flow appear the scream soundtrack of the song RFL World Informational Mix, okay? In two thousand and one, Cruise contributed two executive tracks in the an American Nightmare which starred David Hess, okay? Soundtrack C D Maxi uh single um If You Want World If You Want Was a Blue and never where did you go, okay? In 2003, I can't pronounce it. Okay, Kamisha, Demisha, Moe, Sawire, Martin Gore, included a cover of a version of Cruise Song in my world from the 1993 album, uh, Voice of Love, on, on the album Cover Vault 2, okay? The second in his series of cover albums to dedicate his own musical uh, influences and um, all his albums, Merrick. Inspirations. Wow. The same year, um, cool songs, um, that includes Wolf Spence was featuring the extended ballet secrets in Robert Albans, the, the company, okay? Modified sample of Cruz's song, I Fall Low, was used in the backing book track in the, on Dean Blunt's song. I can't pronounce that. Sorry, it starts the N. No, it's not the N word. It's something else. Okay, okay, okay. Whatever that was. Anyway, Cruz's song "Flowing" um was featured in TV advertisements and trailers for the shows, the show Rick the Richies, which debuted on FX in March 2007. The next year, the music was used on CSI Miami. Okay. And then episode 12 in season 5 was Psy, Dal um, Spar Sparys, how you pronounce it. She sang a rendition of Psy's Beam song. The episode was um, spoof of Twin Peaks, okay? In 2012, the song with Will Spence was used in the episode of the TV show House, okay? Um, which is starring Hugh Laurie. Anyway, personal life. He, she married author and editor Edward Grennan. In 98, they live in Manhattan and, and in the Berk Berkshires, okay? Her health and death began March 28, 2018. She announced on her Facebook page that she had sentient lumpus, okay? Which caused her to preserve pain and affected her ability to walk and stand, okay? She also had depression. She died in Pittsfield, Massachusetts two days ago. She was 65 years old. Her dad was a suicide. Um, she, uh, th her husband said that she had left the realm in her tear terms. No regrets. She's at peace. My next death topic has to do with, uh, Matt Z Zimmerberg, man, someone that I don't know. He, she, he was a Canadian actor who was best known as the voice of Alan Tracy in the 1960s television series Thunderbirds. In sequel films, Thunderbirds are Go and Thunderbird, Thunderbird 6. He was born on uh, Greater Southbury, Ontario, Canada on December 26, 1944. He was um, educated in Detroit, Michigan, in the United States, and started acting at an early age. He, had, he attended Bowling Green State University, Ohio, where he was a Talmudic major, having won, won a scholarship. He moved to the United Kingdom in 1959. Study drama in the London Academy of Musical and D Dramatic Arts, L A M D A for short. Where it was a comparison of Ed Bishop, okay? And he was cast as Alan Tracy in Thunderbirds, okay? As we were commanded to pro producers Gary and Sylvia Anderson by David Holliday, okay? The voice of, um, um, Tra Tra Virgo Tracy, okay? In the interview, he rem remembers his casting. They were having a great difficulty in um, casting the part of Alan Tracy. As they wanted a 
certain sound for him as I walked in. So yeah, Anderson walked me at me and said, "Don't talk." Oh my God. Um, you got those big eyes and in the clefts of in the chin, in the geek cheekbones. And if you were blonde, you look like a very much like Alan. She said, "Now sit down. What is your name again?" And I said, "My name is Matt Zimmerman." And I'm from Detroit, Michigan. And she said, that's a voice. Um, that's how I got a job. Besides voicing Alan, Zimmerman, like other actors uh, on the series, and also voiced, but various not minor characters. He made a live action appearance in one episode of UFO called Exposed in 1970. Among the Anderson's other TV productions. Okay. And, um... He also starred in, sh in Shooty in Hunter's Guide to the Galaxy, okay, the TV series that is. Other TV appearances include Teabag, Mike Angelo, Crazy Like a Fox, Never the Twain, and the and initial made commercials, normally for Wanger Jeans, and so forth. In 2015, Sherman appeared in the Thunderbirds revival, Thunderbirds of Go. He played F Professor Harold in the episode. Tiles of Time. Well, also a stage actor. He also stars play as plays such as A You Get Your Gun, Anything Goes, Once in a Lifetime, and West Top Side Story. He also made a West most recent West End appearance in Fair on the Roof as a Sally Trier in London in 2008. Um, he appeared in the Toy Cast and Comer Pet, taking a role of here, here um, Sculpt, he died two days ago. He was 87 years old. Now, my next death topic has to do with Donald Pittman, Broadway director best known for these followings. Okay, okay, okay. He let me just show you Toy War for Best Conductor and Music and Director as follows um, from 1963. Now, Prime Time Emmy Award from, um, let's say, 1987, as follows. Then, Drama Death Special Award. Year from that year, I'm not sure where to read that. 1986. And that's basically it. And then he, that, yeah, that's basically it for him. He was born in November 26, 1946. That was a little bit of death topic to read. But anyway, he died... It was an American fear music, music director and orchestral conductor. He died two days ago. He was 90-something years old. I can't say. Sorry. He was 95. But anyway. Next step topic has to do with Truly Hayes. Okay. It was American news reporter. She became the nation's first African-American TV web reporter when she was hired by WXYZ TV in Detroit in 1963. In 1965, she became the first African American TV news reporter from K, Y, W, and TV, now CBS 3 in Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where she continued her retirement in 1999. Okay. Um, Haynes will receive an Emmy Award as well as two Lifetime Achievement Awards for a further 33 year career at the K, Y, W, TV, as was hosted at an online show called the Truly Hayes Show at the time of her death. He was born. She was born um, um, Gertrude Daniels in New York City on November twenty third, nineteen twenty six. The only child of Mar Marjorie and Percy Daniels, Haynes um, attended several schools, but she graduated from the Forest Hills Hills High School at Queens, Long Island. Racial. Um, Sir John, first of all, forced her to bust it to school. Okay. The first hill, she became the only African-American cheerleader in her own high school team. In 1943, she was accepted to Howard University, where she studied psychology and physiology. Haynes earned her bachelor's degree in 1947. Okay. Apart from her work in news and network television, she started in Aubrey de DeVore Charm and Marie Angie in the early 50s. Um, 
She was known for being one of the first to market products to um, average consumers to um, use their black models during the age of racial segregation and civil rights movements. Hayden started a 2004 interview with commercially um, black blogger CB Speed for short, modeling just a fun, um, I want to say in my career, it was just something that to do on my side because I was from New York, I was in New York at the time, while associated with Devon Haynes, very similar advertisements, most uh, notably for the first African American to appear on Foxworth advertisement, Loki Strike his Cigarettes. Wow. Later, she became an instructor for other trainees, including Dashian Carroll and B. Richards. B. Up Richards. Now, her journalism career began with broadcasting career, okay? In 1956, Haynes took her first steps towards her, uh, her true college in broadcasting when she was hired by WCHB, black owned radio station in Inkster, Michigan. WCHB was the first black owned radio station north of the Mason Dixon line, okay? The station was created and operated by a father of one of their colleague class, college classmates. Haynes uh, was initially hired by the residents. However, the director of the station took notice and asked if, he, if she wanted to be on the show. Except for the portion, Haynes was named WCHB Woman's Editor. Wow. Polish her interviewing skills while hosting a daily um, nine minute program targeted with a woman. Wow. In 63, um, seven years after Margaret her broadcast debut, Haynes left the world of radio and they're in the homes of the Bay when she became the first African American Weber report to ABC's WXYZ TVs in South Falls, Michigan, suburb of Detroit, Michigan. Anyway, two years later, 1965, Trudy Haynes continued to create milestones as she was hired to be the first African American. Um, um, news report with K KYW TV, now CBS 3, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, where she worked until her retirement in 1989. Okay. When asked about her motivation with Atlanta in such a position, she um, stated that becoming a lack of black reporters in the industry, I was never influenced by anyone. My growth was simply brushness upon my part. Haynes told him she mustered the courage of attain to the position. Okay, I overheard a, a conversation that a station was looking for a replacement of one of the ladies that was going to leave. She was born in blue eyed. I called John Fano. Fano, wow, who had vision. Um, and she, I told him that I was in, interested. Wow, wow. He told me to come out. Actually, the brush one was him. To have a nerve to even um, interview a black person. That was the way it went. In regards to the challenges she faced, probably she being a black and female thinking on the air opportunity when the industry was primarily dominated by white males. Haynes um, states, Call yourself a dozen in this country and I have to agree about 100%. Every black feels it. Mm -hmm. Every black person feels that. And every female that breaks into an all male okay, situation probably feels that the same way. Okay? In the 70s, Truly Haynes became the first African American judge. Okay? Up to the um, Miss American America contest. Okay? Well, she continued to break down her career brothers, and firstly as a judge, secondly by challenging narrow uh, standards of beauty and restraint the populations of African American women in the contest. Her challenge opened doors, was barred women of color to become contestants, and participate in the competition. Competition, excuse me, that become being formally known as white only. Okay, she continued to. Um, Compassion of the Judge for Miss America Contest for three years. Wow. Their portraits. 
Penn State active as in the uh, media, okay? Will follow a retirement from KYW, okay? TV, based on Pennsylvania's uh, Philadelphia thing. Haynes has continued to freelance and make guest star appearances on several local television shows, including WPHL's TV's Philly Connections, okay? Pax TV for short. Anyway, the good news. And uh, Comcast Cable's Let's Talk About and True Haynes Discover Delaware, okay? Um, Haynes established a production company, first run film, right, slash video, okay? Where she graduated her own show segments. She also became an active member of the Philadelphia Community Assessment Coalition, known as PLB Cam, okay? A lobby group that was mission to create public access cable channels in the Philadelphia area. In 2012, Haynes produced and developed a local television show whose audience included the Philadelphia Tri State area, breathing the Comcast Browns, okay? The first male show, national African, African owned television network based in Atlanta, Georgia, okay? In, 2000, in 2013, Haynes, uh, in, in collaboration with um, Lion Spirit Online.com, a national network affiliate, moved her popular show of television to an online on demand format. With the Truly Haynes show, continues to inform its audience. Um, and current issues affecting the African American community, like health, education, and political issues. The show also features the local community and many events. In 2015, okay, Haynes becomes the co host of Good Day, Good Health, a program created by Edward Groves, a non network to affirm the massive um, about med medical breakdown proofs. Way to be a healthier life. In the interactive format, uh, ranging for, for broadcast television, online on demand videos, engaging um, viewers to become a part of the program through the social media. She died four days ago. She was 95 years old. I'm not going to read the whole entire rest of them. So that's just it for right now, at least. So there you go. So yeah. That's my that's my Truly Haynes death topic. My next one is really Robert M. Utley, okay? Best known as Robert Marshall Utley. He was known, it was an American author, historian who wrote 16 books in the National History of American West, okay? He was chief um, instructor in the National Park Service, ser service okay? Most of his writing deals in the United States and in the West, uh, especially with this crimes in the Indian tribes. He wrote, the fighters and army was a conventional military force trying to control by um, conventional military messes and people that did not behave that like conventional enemies, enemies and indeed quite often were not enemies at all. This is the most difficult of all military assignments wherever in Africa Asia and American West. The Western History, History Association were as follows. Uh, Emily Giff and out the Robert M. Emily Book Award, the best book published on the military history of the Western West and North America. Born um, October um, 21st, 1939, this is Halloween by the way, in Box uh, Die, Arkansas. During his childhood, his parents, Don Williams Utley and Barry Utley, moved to northwestern India when he attended high school. Later, we, later nearby, part of the university, okay, received a Bachelor of Science in History and then attended India, India University, okay, for graduate school. Receiving a Master of Arts in History in 1952. Okay. Following his graduation, he served as the U.S. Army, then joined the National Park Service. Now he said he was warm with Samuel L. Martin's wife, wife of achievement given by the social military history. He died last four days ago. <coughs> Excuse me. Thank you. 
<coughs> Thank you. Anyway. Uh, sorry about that, folks. He was 92 years old. Anyways, my next step topic has to do with William J. Sullivan, okay? He was American Judge Trial Reverie of the Connecticut Supreme Supplier Court, okay? He served as the Chief Justice of the Connecticut Supplier Court, okay? He was appointed to the um, Connecticut Supplier Court by Judge Governor John G. Walter in 97, remaining there until his evaluation of the Connecticut Supreme Court, Supreme Court in 99, okay? Judge Sullivan was nominated for the Chief Justice of Governor Walter in 2000, okay? He was appointed to the Connecticut Supreme Court in 2001. He, uh, Justice Sullivan, um, took senator status until a April 15, 2006. Proceeded to serve for the Justice, Senior Justice until 2009, when he was attended at the age of 70. He was born in Waterbury, Connecticut on March 12, 1949. It was a much to prior variant and so serving the Vietnam War, attaching the rank of captain in the United States Army. Okay. During his service, he was a war, war in the um, AML and a graduate's campaign ribbons um, and received two bronze stars from Matt. Merritt, excuse me. So okay, anyway. Court became a brawl in the lengthy and for extent scale 2008-6, excuse me, when it was revealed that retiring Chief Justice Sullivan postponed the probation of the commercial sedition opposing, okay, I don't know what to do next, anyway, opposing um, Freedom of Information Act uh, requires some um, for documents that track the status and history of legal cases in the Connecticut uh, legal system, okay? Hearings uh, in his nominated successor, Justice Pierre T. Zaria. Okay, was put clear, okay? His letter is, um, um, legal anxiety I mean, I'm pronounced it, sorry. Surprised that Sullivan delayed the, um, provocation of the court's opinions, um, because of he feared they might damage Sullivan's chances of become Chief Justice. Both Justice Rose, a favor of the for our nations. Justin Governor M. Joey um, Rabe accepted the withdrawal of the Soviet nomination to be Chief Justice. And uh, after Sullivan's actions reported, Sullivan was referred to the Joyal Re Review Council, which suspended which suspect him for violating Justice's emphatic rules. Exactly. You gotta do something. This suspension is being appealed during the George Reed Committee. Hearing in which Sullivan was questioned, he apologized for this his actions. He remained active as a judge trial remedy and sat regularly for the Connecticut Appeal Court until his death. That was last Monday. He was, um, I can't know, know his age, sorry. My last deaf topic has to do with Alec John Such, okay? Best known as Alexander John Such. Um, he was best known, it was a, it was a, um, American musician. He was best known for the family member of the rock band, Bon Jovi. He was a bass player from 1983 until 1994. Played five albums. He was replaced by Hugh McDonald, okay, who had been playing the original version of band Bon Jovi single, Right Away, okay, as well, as well as playing a credit of live five, five Bon Jovi albums before going officially. When um, when Bon Jovi was he was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame in 2018, he died last last week, which is June 5th, 2022. They were on Wikipedia Rob Bayway. He was 70 years old. Raised in the Perth Avenue, New Jersey, such a long time resistant um calls neck um Townsend, New Jersey, where he kept many music of the IFS in his home there. On June 4th, 2022, Such died in his home in um, Orient County, North South Carolina home. He was um, seven years old. 
He was needed to fit since retired to the Fed early that day. Now we're gonna do a moment of silence reflect regarding these seven people right now. Thank you. Rest in peace to seven people. Um, Julie, um, uh, Matt, Donald, um, Trudy, uh, Robert, um, uh, William, and Alec. Now, my next topic has to, my last topic I'm going to read has to, with, I'm supposed to be reading to tell you the announcement, but I have to wait till July. Anyway, my last one has to do with PBS Julie Woodruff plans to step down as News Hour's anchor man, anchor woman, excuse me. Anyway, it start. It was started last year, it, or last month, excuse me. It st said this, okay? Julie Woodruff said he she'll be stepping down as anchor of the PBS nightly News Hour program at the end of this year. Woodruff thirty five said that she'll be reporting longer pieces of News Hour to do a project special for. Public television, at least through to 2024 publication election. She was part of News Hour's rotating anchor team from 2009 until 2015. And she was, she and Gwen Eiffel were named co anchors of the program. Since Eiffel's death in 2016, Wardrobe had been the show's sole anchor. I love working at PBS News Hour. You can't imagine if not being my part of my life. Wardrobe said the member of the fellow staff members. She was chief and Washington correspondent and news off from 1983 until 1993. And also worked at CNN and NBC News. Plans for replacements were announced in the fall, a PBS spokesman said Saturday, which is two a month ago. Anyway, and I said this announcement real quick that Anna Vaz and Jeff Bennett were be weekly news. Now, news program. And I'm like, wow, very exciting. Now, it said last week, so let's just say, before we begin, first of all, uh, let's search up right now before we end this off that Julie Woodruff stepped down. Go back and say this that I'm going to say one thing about news I real quick, okay? When Julie Woodruff stepped down, I was in shock earlier this week, you know? And I was impressed, you know. I met with Julie Woodruff back in 2020, I mean 2013, before she became co anchor of the News Hour. It was an idea of going to Arlington, D.C. for the first time in person, and that's how I met Julie Woodruff and Jeffrey Brown. Not Gwen Ife at the time, but that's just me. And, um, uh, yeah. This said here. Perfect said this. The show said the details of the successors will be announced in the fall, but a source of familiarity with the plans confirmed reports that Anne Devos and Jeff Bennett are expected to see her, the service co anchors. Pup News will first report that the news is a tradition. We'll do have anger news on a permanent basis since 2014, and she will serve as managing editor. Okay? That makes more sense. Anyway. And I really wish her the best of luck of the news hour because if it wasn't for the news hour, my childhood wouldn't be here today. You know, that's me, of course. Anyway, that's all my topics for today. Now let's move on to what's been going on with me for um, fun facts of the week. Um, I got 20, January 6th commission hearings. This is a, That happens already this week, okay? Now, what it is, folks, it's just the National Commission, uh, here, the invention of the tw tw January 6th attack. I mean, the United States Capitol Complex, known as the commission as the January 6th Commission, was a proposed commission that will have investigated the 2021 United States Capitol attack. Okay, so I never, I, no, I wasn't a victim to that, by the way, thank God. It was opposed on, on um, 
February 15, 2021, by Speaker of the United States House of Representatives, Nancy Pantera Busto, something like that, who announced that she planned to create a 9 11 type commission. The puzzle was negated by um, Republican John Chato. We'll have to uh, consist in the equal number of Democrats and Republicans. A bill um, forming the commission passed the United House of Representatives on Monday, May 19th, which is last month, by the way. Well, all Democrats and 35 Republicans um, voted in support of all of it, okay? However, it was brought by Senate Republicans on May 28th. 54 senators voted in favor of 35 members voting against, following to clear for 60 votes. We need to break a full buster. Wow, this just saddens me, I know. Now, this happened earlier this week. Now, to talk more about it, I saw the news hour. And then ABC News watches Remix for you. And I'm like, wow. Wow. And then, the count, uh, this is like, shocking to me. And, um, it's happened every Thursday. So there you go. And then, um, after this happened, I don't want to say it, but this is going to be shocking to me. You know, that's me, of course. So that was it, you know. And, um, that's all I'm going to say about Jerry Six Missions, Jerry. We'll talk more about it. The, the weeks ahead, all oh, every Thursday, starting next week. Anyway, the next, the last one I talk about is Judy Garland. Now, Judy Garland is now a hundred years old. Okay, and what I'm gonna say to you right now is that's part of fun facts of the week. We're gonna talk about this celebrate hundred birthday of Judy Garland. Okay, she was born Francis Ethel Gum. Okay. Born June 10th, that's her yesterday of, of 100 years ago, to June 22nd, 1969. She was an American actress and singer, but her career did claim to make different roles throughout her career. She was widely known to play the part of Dorothy Gale in The, in the Wizard of Oz and that's very not. She attained international stardom as an actress in both musically, musical and dramatic films, as a record artist and on, stage, on the concert stage. And so forth. And now on her anniversary, she received an Academy um, Judgment Award, a Golden Globe Award, and a special Tony Award. Wow. God was the first woman to win a Grammy Award for an album a year. Okay. So she won her 1961 live recording that titled Juliet Carney Hall. Okay. She began performing in vaudeville as a child with her two older sisters in a vaudeville group called the Gum Sisters. And was later signed to MGM as a teenager. She appeared in more than two dozen films in for MGM. She was a fragrant uh, on state screen partner for uh, both Mickey Rooney and Gene Kelly, okay? And regularly collaborated with director's second husband, um, Vincent Abadelli, okay? All the starring roles during the period included Mimi in St. Louis in 1944, uh, Harvey Goes in 26, East Parade in 48. And Summer Shock, Stock in 1950. Later that year, after 50 years of MGM, the studio released her MN the series of prominent struggles that prompted her from fearing the terms of their contract. Wow, this is shocking me. So I saw the, the same documentary years ago, but it saddens me, I know. Although her film career became imminent for thereafter, two of Garvey's most critical acclaimed roles came later in the career. She received her a nomination for a Academy Award for Best Actress for her performance of A Star is Born in 1954 and a nomination for Best Supporting Actress for her performance in Josh Man uh, in, in Nuremberg, okay, in 1961, okay. She also made record-breaking concert appearances, released eight studio albums, and hosted her own Emmy-nominated television series, The Julie Garland Show. In 1963 until 1964. At age 49, Garland made the youngest and first female recipient of the Cheryl B. DeMille Award for National Achievement in the Film Industry. In 1997, Garland was supposed to be awarded for the Grammy Lifetime Achievement Award. Okay. Several recordings have been inducted for the Grammy Hall of Fame. Wow. In 1999, the American Film Institute. Right is the eighth greatest female screen legend of the classic Hollywood drama cinema. Excuse me, okay, anyway. 
Gawain um, struggled with her very personal life from her early age. She, the pressures of early stardom fed her physical and mental health from the time she was a teenager. Her self-image was influenced by constant criticism from film executives who believed that she was physically unattractive who was mad poly, her on-screen physical appearances, okay? Throughout her adulthood, she was brought by alcohol and substance use disorders. As well as a physical instability, often owing hundreds of thousands of uh, dollars of back taxes. Her lifelong substance use disorder eventually led her to death in London from an accurate bunch of overdose at age 47 in 1969. Now, I wanted to read the children after this is over. This is going to be a long story. Now, she was had three children. Now, she had only three children, including Lisa Bedelli and Lauren Law. Now, Lisa Bedelli had about, back then, she had, um, she was married four times, okay? And she did not know about this. She's now in a wheelchair, I guess, at the time. So, there you go. And after Lauren Loft in the moment right now, she has two children, married two times, and her health began in night 2015, you know. And 2018, she was diagnosed with a brain tumor after collapsing following a London performance. Later that month, she underwent surgery to remove the tumor. The surgery was successful and Loft has since removed, recovered. Wow. Makes sense in any way. So that was Julie Garland. So I have to say this was amazing. Um um uh, actress. Happy Hunter Birthday, Julie. For all of us that was club. And that was the Crazy Ones Web Show episode number um sixty six. This is uh, all of that five minutes of the week, so there you go in that. Hope you enjoy it. Stay tuned for next month's gonna be Um First day of summer episode. We'll just see what happens. Till next time, so Joe's about piece of baby. We're going episodes guys to be soon. Till we're just out. See ya.